So is it really possible to get kicked out of a network marketing company for adding too many people into your organization? I'm going to share that true story with you here and so much more on this video blog post. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is I, Greg Gomez III, founder, CEO, FastStartMarketer.com, and it is true. I got kicked out of a network marketing company for adding too many people into my team. And before I share with you both how I did it and most importantly how you can avoid how you can get those same results and then not get kicked out of a company for doing it, let me first tell you a little backstory. Uh, one of the things that I learned about network marketing, I did things traditionally, went out there, I recruited friends, family, I'm Hispanic so I have over 200 friends and family and I went after everybody and I could get very few people into my business. It just didn't work very well for me. Bottom line was I was only able to recruit three people into my team and I think they only bought out of pity so it was pretty sad. I left that company because I thought it was a product, a service, the opportunity, it was something wrong with them and that was keeping me from being able to get the recruits I needed. Well, the truth was is I didn't know how to sell, I didn't know how to recruit, and when I learned how to sell, I took a telemarketing job and I learned how to prospect, how to present, how to objection handle, and how to close. Well, the next business I went into, I started to build a sizable organization pretty quickly. I went in there and I recruited folks based on the opportunity. I drove people to hotel meetings, house parties, three-way calls, private home meetings. I had them watch <laughs> video cassettes. This is how long ago this was. I had people watch video cassettes. And fast forward, uh, I, about a, six months into it, I had recruited quite a few people, but I was actually plateaued. I don't know if this has ever happened to you or if you've seen this happen to other folks. I was adding plenty of people on the front end, but the challenge was I was losing just as many people out of the back end faster than I could recruit more people in. This is the big bane of a lot of network marketing leaders is you get to a certain income level, a rank advancement if you will, and you can't push past that because you're not, just, you're not bringing enough, enough people on the front end to offset what you're losing out the back. And in my particular company at this time, that was a big detriment because I had chargebacks and cancels and things that ate away at my future commissions if people didn't stick around long enough. It was a terrible situation. I ultimately had given up on this company, stopped recruiting, waited for the cancels and the chargebacks and all these other things to come back. Well, a couple of months later, I got another commission check. And another month after that, I got a commission check. And another month after that, I got a commission check. And this was blowing my mind because everybody, and I mean everybody that I had sponsored for recruiting, had bailed the company. They were out but I kept getting these residual checks. Well, when I checked my reports to see where these monies were coming from, I realized that the people that were still paying me were people who were consuming the service and didn't come in for the business opportunity. Let me say that again. The folks that were the most stable for my residual checks were folks who'd come in first and foremost for the product or the service, and they were using that product and service on a monthly basis, so they kept and continued to pay those residual fees. And in fact, that company, I still have folks that are in that company uh, paying residuals from there because of the need of the services. Make sense? All right. So what does this have to do with getting kicked out of a networking company? Here we go. So I realized two things. I had two new skill sets. I had an insight as to what and how people buy and stick long term. I had this concept, maybe I don't lead with the opportunity because everybody I brought in in the opportunity, they dropped out in less than 90 days. But if I led with a product, and they got a good result from the product, they stuck around. So why not target people who need a better result from a product and just lead with the product first? So that was my first concept. The second concept was I'd learned these marketing and sales skill sets on how to pick up the phone. I knew how to buy cold targeted leads of people who were already interested in what it is I had to offer and I ultimately learned how to be able to communicate my value to them based on their needs so that they would consume the product or the service. Still with me? I hope I didn't lose you because that was pretty technical. Long story short, I knew where to get leads of people who already wanted the stuff I had and I learned how to frame an offer that benefited them. I figured out what they wanted and showed them how to get what they wanted through my products and services. Got it? Cool. So fast forward to the next company. Ah, it was Swagger. I knew I was going to be successful with this new company or at least I anticipated I would and sure enough I was. In a few months I, was, I built a team that was adding hundreds of people a week following this methodology and I was dumping these people left and right into my front line and I was enjoying the fruits of my labor until I got the cease and desist from the company that basically said, hey, we don't know what you're doing, we don't care what you're doing, you're doing too much whatever it is, knock it off. And so one of the leaders who was kind of jealous of me in this company actually wound up finding out exactly what it is we were doing and how we were doing it and that was against company policy, or at least percept uh, perceptively it was. See, they had formed rules against picking up the phone to market your business in this way. And I thought that was limited to the opportunity side. I didn't realize it also counted towards the product consumption side. 
The company's concerned and it's well founded. This company's still around, so I'm not going to mention their name. Good company. I, I think they have phenomenal services. That company looked at the way we were doing things and said, you know what? We realize you're doing it correctly. However, if we had everyone else trying to knock off what you're doing, what's going to happen is, is it's going to cause a lot of fiasco for us as a company. So what I did was, and they changed the commission structure. They allowed us to continue to do it. But ultimately what wound up happening was by them changing the commission structure uh, to a smaller as this, because their concern was, hey, are these people going to stick around? I knew that they would. But hey, you know what? They didn't. And as a result of that, they adjusted the commission structure to where I couldn't make it work anymore. It wasn't profitable for me to do. And as a result, I left. I went and found a different company and I wound up, so they forced me out as a result of it. I wound up finding a different company and I learned my two big mistakes here. And this is what you want to learn. When you're adding dozens of people into your business on a weekly basis, don't put them all front line. Have your team be the ones receiving that. So the next venture I put together, I had the team members be my front line and they were the ones dialing. I had them actually recruit people into their business because I'm their upline, it streams up to me anyway, so I didn't care. And I just brought enough people from this process into my front line, into my personal recruits, so that I could maximize the earnings I was getting from my downlines production. Make sense? Now this new company was a startup company, it, it hadn't been around long. I then was with this company, the, as long as it lasted was two years uh, while I was with them, and I was the number one rep in that company for, you know, ever, in that company for the entire two year time frame I was there. And we we're adding well over 247 people a week. It took me six months to build that team up, but that's exactly what happened. So yes, the bottom line is two lessons for you. You can get kicked out of a company for adding too many people. This happens more often than you think. Especially if you're trying to use the internet or if you're trying to use telephones and the company does not understand how you're doing it. Or if you're recruiting people incorrectly and they're having a high drop off of the large numbers you're bringing in, your company will have a problem with that too. Now, how was my retention in that first company? Well, we had about a 75 to 80% retention with the folks that we brought on in that previous method. So lo and behold, they came back afterward and said, hey, what were you doing? We'd like to learn more. Sorry, you didn't stick by me. I'm in this other company now. And for you, the second thing you need to be aware of is never, ever, ever, if you're adding hundreds of people in, never add them to your front line directly. Have them filtered through your team so that you can actually have that look more organic. And more importantly than that, you should have your team benefit from what it is you're doing as well. That's why they're on your team. It's one of the benefits of being part of your team, right? Okay. My name is Greg Gomez III. If you want more strategies, tips, tactics, and ways to learn how to be able to improve the performance of your business, if you want to learn what it is exactly I did that helped me build a team, the scripts I used, the lead sources I had, and most importantly, how I took these processes and I streamlined them to get not duplication, but to get systemization in your business and in your recruiting, it's simple. Click the link below, get a copy of my blueprint. This is the entire process that I did from top to bottom, from leads to scripts to processes to how I scaled out my team and ultimately how I actually added dozens of people every week and still continue to add dozens of people every day into my teams using power of the internet, the written word, and of course, the telephone. It's all available for you right now. Click the link, get started, and I'll see you on the inside. Enjoy.